One day, I was bored and decided to search for my own name on Google. I have quite a rare name, so I didn't expect to find many results. Imagine how surprised I was when I came across a website that had my full name in the domain, www.myname.com. When I clicked the link, it brought me to a message board. I looked at the profile of the website owner and found out that the person was the same age as me and had the same hobbies and interests. There weren't any posts on the message board, but I was intrigued, so I saved it in my favorites. It was about a month later when I went back to the website. This time, it had more content. There were some diary entries, mostly random things like, the weather was nice today, or I'm so bored in work, things of that nature. However, as time went on, I began to notice more and more coincidences. A person lived in the same city as I did. It struck me as rather strange that two people with the exact same rare name would be living in the same city at the same time. At one point, I noticed that the contents of the diary were quite similar to my own life. One day, I went to a baseball game, and when I checked the website that evening, I found that the owner of the site had gone to the same ball game. At first, I didn't think much of it. After all, tens of thousands of people in the city supported the same baseball team. It began to seem like much more than a simple coincidence. Whenever I checked the website, I would notice little biographical details that seemed too close for comfort. For example, the owner mentioned their pet dog, and the dog's name was the same as the dog I had when I was a child. The website owner posted a picture of their car. It was the same model of car I had been driving when I was in college. They talked about eating at a certain restaurant. It was the same restaurant I had gone to all the time when I was working at my previous job. One day, when I looked at the message board, people had written messages to the owner saying, Happy birthday. That day, it was my birthday as well. I decided to write on the message board for the first time. Just out of curiosity, I was going to wish the owner a happy birthday and tell them we had the same name. However, when I tried to write something, I realized that there was nowhere to type your message. It wasn't a message board at all, just a static page. That's odd, I thought to myself. In other words, whoever owned the website had gone to a lot of trouble to make it seem as if it was an interactive site, as if there were other people posting on it, when in actual fact, all the content must have been created by the owner. Why on earth would someone do that? I wondered. I decided to send an email to the owner. It read, Hi there, believe it or not, we both share the same name. Nice to meet you. It was just a friendly email. The next day, when I tried to look at the website, I discovered that it was gone. It seemed like it had been deleted. Then, I opened my mailbox. There was one reply. When I looked at it, a chill ran down my spine. It just read, Found you. Many years ago, I used to work night shift at a hotel in Myrtle Beach. During the season, it wasn't so bad, mostly families and stuff. We had on-site security then too. However, in the off-season, the winter months was different. The cheap weekly rates we'd offer attracted a lot of creepy people. The idea was supposed to be to make money in the off-season by renting to what is known as snowbirds, older retired people who came to the beach for a month or more through the winter. It did not always work out that way though. The cheap rates made it possible for a less than desirable element to become long-term residents. I've discovered more than my fair share of meth labs, broken up physical assaults, and more during the winter months. Working third shift I would meet some interesting people. The cold weather would mean some homeless people would come in and get warm and grab a cup of free coffee. I wasn't supposed to let them, but it's not in me to be cruel. I would let them grab a coffee and get warm for a minute as long as they didn't cause trouble. As you can see, night shift in the winter made for some crazy and sometimes creepy stories. I have a lot, but this one is one that stands out because it didn't end well for me. I had a great night up to this point. I had gone to an indie wrestling show with my best friend before work. In fact, I had agreed to come in an hour early the next night for the young lady that worked second shift in exchange for her working an hour late for me on this night so I could enjoy the wrestling show. Ironically enough, I met Terry Funk that night, a wrestling legend known for his hardcore and bloody matches. Little did I know I was about to experience this kind of violence for real. I was supposed to be there at midnight due to her working over an hour for me. I normally came in at 11 p.m. I counted the register and she briefed me on her shift as to what had happened as per usual. As she was leaving, my friend we will call him Andrew pulled up. He worked second shift maintenance at this hotel and the other two hotels are company owned. He would regularly stop by after work and go grab us some food and we would play World of Warcraft on our laptops after eating for a while since business was so slow. He was just getting my money in order for food and getting ready to leave. 
I was excited telling him about how much fun I had at the wrestling show and was showing him my Terry Funk t-shirt I was so proud of. I was just walking into the back office to put the shirt up when I heard the doorbell indicating a customer had entered. It is true what they say, ask not for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. I had turned around when I heard someone say something loudly, but I still couldn't make out what they had said. I had just reached the doorway when I saw Andrew just fall down in front of me. The next thing I know, a guy walks around the corner and punches me in the head with a short steel pipe in his hand. It staggered me and I went to one knee. The next thing I know, he hits me in the head with the pipe. The next thing I know, I hear the other guy who I hadn't noticed to this moment say, he got away and got a cop. They left out the door. I was finally able to get to my feet. I tried to call the police from the phone in the back office, but it was having issues. I slammed it in frustration. I was hurting and scared. I was really freaking out. I realized that they could come back so I ran locked the door. I didn't know where Andrew had gone and that worried me. I called 911 about this time. Blood had started pouring down my head. I told the operator I had been attacked and needed an officer and ambulance. I then called the other hotel we ran to let the night manager named Travis, who was over all three properties what had happened. He thought I was messing with him at first, because when we got bored we would prank each other. I finally convinced him I was not joking. He was going to lock up and come down. The cops and ambulance pulled up and I opened the door. It was at this time I found out after they suckered punched him and knocked him down. Andrew was able to amazingly jump over the desk and escape, just as a cop was driving by which he ran to flag down for help. I ended up in the hospital or where I had to have 10 staples in my scalp, and they gave me morphine for pain. I had no way to get home after being treated, but the doctor and nurses took pity on me and paid for a cab. My plan was to go back to work, because this was December and Christmas was coming. I had three kids and needed all the hours could get. When I got back to the hotel, the guy Ted was there with his wife Barbara, who also worked at the front desk. She was shocked to see me. She thought I would still be in the hospital. I thought I had only been hit in the head once after being punched. A video which Ted was pulling for the police showed a different story. After I went to one knee, the guy had hit me not just one time, but ten total times. I kept trying to grab the pipe and get up for some reason. I do not remember that I guess I was out on my feet. He kept punching me and hitting me with the pipe, till his friend tells him Andrew got away and then got the cops. The two of them then run out. I was given a room at the other hotel we own, and Ted and Barbara gave me a lift there, as I was in no condition to drive due to the morphine. They also gave me a paid week off to heal. They switched me over to the other hotel on night shift for a month, just in case they were after me in particular. We never found out why they chose to attack me. The police thought it might be a failed strong arm robbery, due to Andrew getting away and me not just going down. It shook me up though not knowing. Even though I was at our other hotel when I came back to work night shift, I was still nervous. Every time the door chimed I tensed up. I couldn't afford to quit though. As I said I had three kids I was supporting. They never caught the guys as far as I know. The detective stopped by about two months later when I was working second. He showed me several mug shots and asked me if any of them looked familiar. I never got a great look at them as it all happened so fast. I had seen the video which wasn't the best quality. Even so two of them looked very familiar like them. I pointed them out and he asked me how sure I was. I told him honestly like 85%. He then yelled and asked me if I wanted someone to go to jail for attempted murder on 85%. I was stunned into silence. I was the victim. I was attacked for no reason and he is yelling at me like it's my fault I was too busy being attacked to get a good look at them. I no longer work at a hotel in night shift and I'm glad because it is just too dangerous in this area.